Hello, hello, one, two, three, Sam Tobit, Sound of Joy Music Services. As always, I'm looking to do some house cleanup work here. I want to make sure that the stream is coming through okay and that I can share it uh, with one of the musician sites. Okay, stream looks good. I sound good. Let's just share this. And we'll send it to... Do, do. Musicians in the gospel music industry. And musicians in the gospel music uh, ministry. All right, we're sharing it. So, again, repeat. This is Samuel Tolbert, uh, owner and operator of Sound of Joy Music Services. And what I have done since 1992, uh, back in my early days on AOL, was to share tips and techniques with musicians who were coming into the coming into their own as far as being a church musician. Do some little cleanup here. I was watching a post. Welcome, Adolf. How you doing? How you doing? I was, I was watching a post, as I normally do, and a musician had posted he is becoming, he's becoming an organist for the first time, and he was wanting some tips and techniques that what he should do so that he can be at his best, be the best musician he could possibly be. And look, I got a light up here. I think I may have to change it. So of course, um, I don't. I think I did post something there about what kind of songs he should play as far as the congregation go. But I thought since I do have the the uh, the setup here to be able to do a virtual organ lesson, that I would do that. Especially now that I've added in an expression pedal, which was uh, again sitting amongst my my collection of stuff that I have. So now I can do expression pedal. <laughs> Oh, I couldn't do it. So, they give me a chance now to cover a lot more uh, with the use of the expression pedal. So, as whoever's going to join, I know Adolf, you have joined already. If you have any questions, I'm monitoring it on my, on my iPhone so I don't miss anybody. So, for the new musician, also this is being recorded for my YouTube page. So if I make references to Facebook, uh, this is why those are on my YouTube page. The organ, nine out of ten times, may you may be walking into a Hammond organ setting, which it has got double manuals. Actually, I'm giving you the wrong look here. Let me change my look so that uh, it'll make some more sense to you what I'm saying remember how to do this I think it's this one there we go you're going to have dual manuals an upper and a lower and foot pedals foot pedals will be the most of the difficult things to learn because that takes touch but I've often as I said when I was learning to play uh, the organ I took my shoes off so that I would not so I could feel what a foot pedal feels like as I practice chromatic notes heel toe heel toe heel heel toe heel toe heel toe heel excuse me toe toe at, at the at the top note this is again this is virtual i have uh, 13 foot pedals on my midi keyboard so playing with my feet off is is safety so i don't break it um pressing as hard as i would do there we go i didn't have the volume up so your heel, toe, heel, toe, heel, toe, excuse me, heel, heel, toe, heel, toe, heel, toe, 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 as you get higher because it's going to come a little more difficult to play with the heel once you get past um, A flat, I'd say, or G rather. But you will get, that you will learn. What you're looking at is the actual keyboard, the keyboard setup. Draw bars, you know, do I use all the additional buttons that are on there, percussion, the volume controls, all this nice stuff that's here, that will come in time. You just want to be able to sit down and get a sound out of it. Now, for technique purposes, let me change this back to what I had. Who joined us? 
How you doing, Cedric? Glad to have you on board. So, for the new musician who steps up to the Hammond, probably not for the first time, but now to be the main musician, the first things that you would have to learn, draw bar settings, because you should already know what a keyboard looks like. Percussion is on, turn that off, there we go. You should know what these look like already. You, shouldn't, you should not have to be uh, instructed on how to find middle C, A flat, B flat, E flat, A, D, G, C. You should know that already from coming more from keyboard or from piano. Now you want to be able to, when do I start to get the sounds out of the organ? If you're like most musicians, they hide their drawbar settings. So if you come into your own as the musician, you will come to a blank slate like what you see right now. Let me just move these out of the way. You open the organ. Um, this is again, this is generic, so you don't see the the way it starts. On an actual organ, you will see two switches to power it on on your right side, uh, on the uh, on the upper manual side, on the on the wood portion of the organ. I want to be see if I can switch this back, give you an idea where you're going to look for that. You probably know it. Okay, here they don't give it to you, but if you're looking at, I don't know if you see my, you probably don't. But above the percussion, all these buttons here, if you see me clicking them, you'll know where I'm pointing to. Up above that, you're going to see two switches. One will say start, one will say run. Let me close that down. What you're going to do is before you get the organ started, this is old fashioned, what they call tone wheel. It's a generator built on the inside. I know all about this because I worked with my father for years fixing them in churches. There's a generator that turns a tone wheel. It needs to have a start. You, can't, you just can't turn on your traditional Hammond organ. It has to be started up like an old uh, Ford car. It's got to be cranked up, you might say, and then a run switch hit to keep it going. So you're going to hit the start switch. You will hold that for 10 seconds. You will continue to hold that switch for 10 seconds and then turn on the run switch for 5 seconds. Release the start switch. The run switch should stay on and then your organ will power up. If you turn them on both at the same time, you're going to hear a nice pop out of the tone cabinets. You might blow something and you may even wind up burning out a switch hitting them both at the same time. Hopefully if you're coming to the organ for the first time, the previous organist would have shown you how to do this. But just from a novice, or a novice standpoint, if you've never turned on a Hammond organ before, you have run on the left, start on the left, run on the right. I don't have an organ in front of me. It's been a while since I've been on the Hammond organ. Turn on the start switch, count to 10. Then turn on the run switch, count to five, Technically, you should let them both go. The, the start switch should automatically come back because it's, it's sort of spring-loaded. If it doesn't, pull it back, but it should pop back on its own. The run switch stays on. That gets your organ started. I want to see who joined because we are doing this live also on Facebook. So now you've got your organ started. You'll know when it started. You will hear a motor turning. You're going to look at... Um, I gotta change this again so you can see what I'm talking about. You will look at the left side of the organ and you're gonna see these, these uh, where your last note stops. You should see me pressing on the last note. Let me see. That's your last note there. You're gonna see the section of notes after that. These are presets. The first one is a preset for Should be four, okay. These will give you some preset sounds. As you can see, the my virtual one is changing the presets. These will be automatically set. You won't have to set any sounds. They are just there to emulate particular pipe organ sounds. They were preset by the Hammond Organ Company uh, for the musician who probably wasn't really comfortable setting their own presets. That's what they're there for. Trust me, you will, if once you get into practicing, 
you will to learn how to love these because they give you a sound that you would not be able to develop on your own. That's why they call them presets. Now you can see I moved some of them out on the presets, but for this explanation for you who's joined us, okay, no one's joined us, we're going to give you the walkthrough, the basic walkthrough for drawbar settings. Let's give us your bigger, okay, for drawbar settings. There's an upper and a lower manual. You will find out that uh, by looking at it, which set of drawbars are for the upper, which set are for the lower. If you go and you press the keys, you will get no sound. Starting from the far left of the brown drawbars first set, you pull that out and you will hear a sound. Oh, and I should cover this also. You have an expression pedal. Let me go back to here. Bottom of the organ, here they put it, you see it moving right here. You see it moving as I move it. This will be underneath the organ. This is what your foot goes on to control the overall volume when you're playing. Of course, you can control the volume also by pulling draw bars out, but this is your overall main volume. This controls the volume of every, every key and every foot pedal note. So if you pull out draw bars, you hear nothing, and you don't know to put your foot there and to move it up. If you see me moving it up and down, that is your expression or volume pedal. Good place to put it is midway, not all the way up, because if you pull too many draw bars out and you start playing with all the draw bars out, somebody's going to tell you to get off that organ, or you, you know, you're going to blow something. Halfway up is a good spot, because I'm doing this virtual, I'm going to go all the way because of the, the, the level of the tone. So we were covering how to get comfortable with the draw bars. Let me go back to this setting. Let's see who's joined us. Hold down a single note and begin pulling on the left side. Each draw bar has one to eight uh, numbers. Those numbers are the length from one foot to eight foot. For, for, in a, for a better sense of the word, if this was an actual pipe organ, you'd have a one foot all the way to an eight foot. So that would determine how loud it's going to sound. This is why I say the expression pedal also uh, it's like your main loudness, but also you have to control the loudness from whatever, how many numbers that you pull out. I always say start with all four of them out. Start from here, your volume pedal at half, just to hear what it sounds like. Then you can sort of play with the volume, but the volume foot pedal, you see it moving there to see what, uh, how loud does it sound. Let me just change my setting here again. Now you see which one I'm playing there. You see I've got these four out. Don't worry too much about all these other buttons. They will come in time. And you get to see how your sounds are. Being that you're coming from the, um, the realm of a keyboard player or a piano player, you know chords already. You can start to do a song. So now you know that the first four draw bars gives you this type of sound. You begin to start to mix sounds when you start to remove draw bars. So if you remove the second brown draw bar, sound changes. That's pulled out, that's pushed in. If you remove the third one, that's pushed in, that's pulled out. If you remove the fourth one, this down. That's pushed in, that's pushed out. Now here's where you start to mix and match to your comfort level. Because when you're playing the piano, you just have one manual to worry about. So we're just going to worry about one manual here so that gets you in that's, that gets you in the in the ballpark by turning it on pulling out the uh draw bars gets you to your seat and now you're watching what's happening as you're the now the orchestrator of the sound who else has joined us just checking as i say i am streaming with uh 
recording for my YouTube page also and streaming here on Facebook. So, and I want the musicians that are moving from piano to organ, uh, from, yeah, from piano or keyboard to organ, not to be afraid of this. It's just another instrument. It's just a whole different concept of how to get the sound out of it that you want. Because now you have the ability to manipulate the sound. Let me just change my view once again. So as you see, we've got different lengths for the sound. There are more of them. If I hold one note, as I pull more out, you hear they all begin to change. Again, this being different pipe sizes if this was an actual pipe organ. So you had, what, eight foot or I think it may also deal with the actual thickness for the different tones that you're getting. So as you, I often say, find a comfortable range for you to practice in and then begin to pull some out to see how they change what you're, what you're playing. Let me just go to my Cordy app and let's, let's go to, go to D flat. Most of your hymns are in D flat, E flat, or F. So as you see, as I pull it out, depending upon what, I, what sound I want to hear, In fact, my expression pedal works. So if you were doing the chorus, who, who joined us? Okay. If I were doing the chorus to I Surrender All. It's the, uh, it's the ultimate fun toy for a musician to be able to be in a service and being able to manipulate how you want an organ to sound. A keyboard player most times would have to reach over and start turning off one tone to bring up another one and you have that pause in between. But with an organ, you just start mixing and matching uh, draw bars, which is all you really have to work with, except you have a Leslie. And I'm going to cover that now. A Leslie sound is that sound of air being swirled around. It's literally a horn rotating at a quick speed. In fact, I can show you that. Uh, should be right here. Nope, not that one. There we go. This is virtually what you are, what, what you have is horns and rotating air from as the sound comes out. You turn the Leslie on, you see it speed up. Turn it off. 
they slow down. Turn it on again. Turn it off. And you again are in control of when the Leslie comes on and when it goes off. That is all up to you. But that's just to give you a, a quick look, see at what what you're actually working with. Let me go back to and here the Leslie switch is located on. You see me flicking the button again. This is electronic on my end, but you see the button flash or move from left to right. Fast to slow. So when you hear that sound come on by the organist, you know what they're doing. They generally, and there's been talk of when to use it, when not to use it. You you, you determine that as a musician. Just as you determine what draw bars you're going to pull out just based upon the song. Because even with this few draw bars out, it makes a difference. You determine that. So we've covered turning it on, we've covered how to bring the sounds out, the preset sounds that are in the far uh, keys to the left, and they will be in black and white, I believe it's black and white keys, very far left. We covered the how you can pull draw bars out to give you the different tones. Now we're gonna go to the foot pedal. As you can see, I have a virtual one here. Foot pedal is always the two middle draw bars by themselves. They're always going always to find them in the middle. This, again, virtual keyboard only has two upper and lower manuals, but on a regular keyboard, you'll have four of them. If I remember right, four of them. This way, you can switch between different sounds. But the two in the middle will always be for your foot pedals. And they have the same concept. Pull them out for the loudest volume. They each have, each have a different sound. Depends upon what, how you want to approach a, a, a particular song. Most people will use the one to the right, draw bar to the right the most, and they may bring it up just a little bit on the other one, just for a particular sound. So that, that's, that's one-on-one. -on -one. That now gets you playing, or not afraid, I should say, of all the buttons and all the draw bars and having two manuals and having foot pedals. The fun part begins now, when you begin to manipulate sound. And I'm gonna see if I can cover that right now. I'm gonna change my key on my Cordy app because I want you to see what I'm doing. Uh, let's go to G flat because I like the key of G flat. We're gonna manipulate some sounds here. Let me switch this. We'll just leave percussion alone. We'll leave the vibrato alone. A good spot is chorus three, vibrato and chorus. That's a, that gives you a, I don't wanna call it a 
a, a, a mechanical sound, but if you were to move that, it shuts me off. If you were to move the, the vibrato chorus button, you hear the sound changes a bit. For lack of a lack of, of a better explanation, before there was Leslie, there was the vibrato chorus button. That was an artificial um, tremolo sound. But when the Leslie came out, a lot of people just went to either C1 or C3 was where they would select, depending upon how well maintained the instrument they were on that they were playing. Let's see who has joined us. All right, let's want to make sure if any questions come up, especially for any new musicians, this is an answer to a post I saw of a new musician who was moving from keyboard to organ, and he wanted to know, is there any way he can get some tips, or should he sit with someone that may be hard in today's current climate of life, but as I say, I try to help everybody who I possibly can with the knowledge and experience that I've had being a church musician and a Hammond B3 player since I was a child, in a sense, because we had one when I was... 12 years old in the house. All right, so I'm going to go to G flat because I want to see get you to see how the, the different settings will help you in playing a song. Again, is the organ just for hymns? Oh, of course not. Many jazz players lit, make their cut their bread and teeth, uh, cut their teeth on, on, a, on a Hammond organ. If you've been watching... Uh, and I'll use this term, Master Corey Henry, because when he was a young man, he was, we called him Master Corey Henry. He was playing the B3, and I, my mouth t dropped as I watched a five-year-old playing chords with both hands. He couldn't reach the foot pedals, but he was playing bass with his left hand and chording with both left and right hand, and I said, this is not right. <laughs> but uh, to see him now, again, I always say, I, was, I, I remember when. <laughs> But so playing in G flat is a uh, majority of all your black keys are being used. Some will say that is the pentatonic scale. It's all black keys. I've seen other YouTube posts of people saying that the black keys are the African American scale because all their songs were written in that scale. Amazing Grace played in all the black keys. Again, that's what they say. I, I, I have my own uh, theory towards these things. Welcome those on my uh, YouTube channel who may be uh, seeing this as I post it later on. So, G flat, and I'll stay with Amazing Grace. Yeah, when I kick that Leslie in there, it changes. Now I'm using the expression pedal to show you how you can control the volume. This is the only way you can express express how you're playing, your feelings while you're playing. And as you, 
I'm sure you're watching is with having a, a Cordy app running in the background. You see all those notes I'm holding, yet I'm still playing. If you were a keyboard player or a piano player, you had to constantly keep hitting the notes to keep it sounding. With an organ, you hold that chord there, and that chord will stay there until, turn that down, that chord will stay there until you lift your hands up. It will not go away. So this is the advantage organ players have had over every other instrument. They can just let it sit right there and then bring in more. Musicians that are that are looking at the organ, if though that's going to be a hard task, get on it. Hopefully, these tips that I'm sharing with you will get you comfortable with getting on it. It's not as bad as it looks, and you're going to find within your third or fourth time just getting comfortable pulling out draw bars, you'll be creating sounds that other musicians will want to know. Hey, what's that setting you had? Because each instrument is different based upon how well it's been maintained. Hopefully you won't have a organ that has broken, uh, broken draw bars in the sense the back of the, the wires on the back of the, of the draw bars have broken off, in which case you may have to have a technician come in, unless you're good with a soldering iron, to go on the back and just solder back the wire. Hopefully your foot pedal, uh, your, your springboards and your foot pedals are not bent or broken. If they are bent or broken, um, if you've got a good technician around the church who doesn't, who knows how to, um, who can take stuff apart and put it back together, it's easy to just take the take the the foot pedals off. You're lifting on both sides, two people, one lift on the left, one lift on the right, straight up, and then pull it back, and then you could uh, until you can get some pedal pushers that we call them uh, that little spring, little spring uh, fingers. You can swap from the far right, which no one really uses, and, and replace the ones on the left if they're bent or broken. When you put that, the foot pedals back, make sure you have two people doing this. I've done it by myself as one because I know how to do it. But you've got to lift evenly on the front so that it doesn't get bent hitting the um, pedal pushes on the inside. And then just push it back into place. If your pedals are bouncing, where if you hit it and you start getting this every time you play a note, because the, because the pedals are bouncing, there are uh, nuts on the inside of the back of the pedals. There's the board. I believe it's one, two, three, maybe five screws that hold the board in place. Let me just remember one, two, three, two, I think it's five screws. Whatever you see, Phillips heads, that board can be taken off, and then you could use either pliers or the correct size socket, and you could turn the nuts to tighten the foot pedals. You don't want to make it too tight, but you tighten it enough so that it stops bouncing. When you hit it, you don't get this. Or if you hit it and it just sticks in place and it doesn't come back up, 
These are the trip, the tips and tricks that I've done. Well, first of all, it wasn't a tip or a trick for me. I knew how to repair them. That's how again, I worked with my father. We would repair pedals all the time. But to get you out of a service, if you're in a service and you don't have time to have that done, taking some paper and sticking it underneath, some heavy card stock paper and sticking it underneath the pedals works also. Anything to push it up so that it doesn't stay stuck on you. Just reach underneath, fold it, you know. I think I got something here. You can find something heavy stock like this. Just, I don't want to do this, mess this up, but fold it up and just stick it underneath that pedal that's, that's bouncing on you. And that will get you through the service until you get the technician in uh, to do his thing. And you just pay the technician. I've seen some posts where some, some technicians haven't been paid. They're worth their money to give you that good sound you want to have on Sunday morning. So, yes, pay the technician. My father was a technician and... Uh, you, he made sure he, he got paid or <laughs> your organ didn't work on Sunday. All right. So I'm just looking to see if there are any questions here on my Facebook page. I don't see any. So this is my introduction to the musicians who, musicians who are coming from piano to organ and have that hesitance as see you know, is this something that I really want to do trust me it is you want to be an organ player I've my I cut my teeth on a Hammond C3 and a Hammond B3 in my father's repair shop so I've always had one to practice on um, although you see me play a lot of keyboard and a lot of pianos because my first nine years as a church musician was I played on the Steinway Grand so I love that Steinway full grand sound you know you see me do that on a lot of my videos, that's the sound pass I will, I will pick because I just love that sound. But uh, I'm by heart and by stock and trade as a church musician, I am an organist. I love the ability to manipulate the sounds while the service is going on to be able to match what's happening. Um, let me leave you with a song. I'm going to change my key here on Cordy. Let's put you in A. Yeah, go A flat. A flat is an unofficial. Uh, soloist key for church musicians and uh, let's see because I can hear in my head what it sounds like on my headphones these are kind of the settings I would use not a little bit of a take that down a little bit wow this is really sensitive that's okay. I always like to leave you with a with a, a, a song. It's kind of my own my thing here. Thank you.
you have any comments, concerns, or questions, not just here on Facebook, but those on my YouTube page who are watching this video, hit me up. You have my link on YouTube, and you have my um, direct message or comment on this video on Facebook. Be blessed, and take care.